the Upper Peninsula, a place of breathtaking natural beauty. From its glistening shores to its dense forests and rolling hills. For generations, this stunning landscape has inspired countless photographers to capture its majesty and reveal its hidden secrets. From the pioneering work of B.F. Childs to the iconic images of the UP's mining camps and forests, photography has played a vital role in capturing the beauty and character of this breathtaking region. We've been talking about these photographers, I have, at least for 45 years, and never had photos of a lot of them. Well, they were here the whole time. Portraits of B.F. Childs and Max Sterl, these are famous UP photographers. They've been sitting here for 110 years. Sometimes you just don't know until you start digging. B.F. Childs was a prolific photographer who captured stunning images of the Upper Peninsula's natural beauty, as well as its people and culture. His work spans several decades throughout the late 1800s. What makes B.F. Child's work truly special is the way that he captured the essence of the Upper Peninsula. Through his lens, he revealed the rugged and wild landscapes and the hardworking people who call the region home. In the early 1870s, Childs traveled with his sailboat, the Wanderer, around Lake Superior. Over the course of several trips, he traveled the entire shoreline of Lake Superior with several assistants and produced hundreds of stereographic images of his journeys. Childs is just one of the many talented photographers to provide a visual record of this area. But the legacy of photography in the UP isn't limited to the past. Today, the region continues to be a source of inspiration for photographers of all stripes. When I was in high school, I took a black and white photography class my sophomore year, and I stuck with it ever since. I moved to the Upper Peninsula in 2006. It's just gorgeous up here. You know, you could go to the same spot every month and it will always change. And I, I like that it's a little bit of a slower pace and uh, you know you come over the bridge and you have that sense of calming that comes over and I, I've lived a lot of different places and this is definitely a great place to uh, raise your kids and settle down. I've lived in the Upper Peninsula for the better part of 32 years. I found a, my grandpa's old camera. It's like the one thing I have of his. And it was this old Minolta. And um, you know, I was in Walgreens one day when they still sold film and bought like a few rolls just to try it out. And getting those developed, I think like I just kind of just did it for fun. Like it didn't put much thought into it. And still, like those first two rolls of film I shot were probably like two of my favorite rolls that I've ever shot. A lot of people like keep track of what they shoot and what settings they use and like I, I do not. So every single time I get stuff back from the dark room, it's like uh, it's like brand new to me. Like I have like no recollection of shooting it or like why it looks that way. And then you get a new roll and you just like uncover the mystery again. When I moved to Marquette, I began really as a nature photographer. Actually, during college, I lived right by Presque Isle Park. So there's all these photo possibilities. You have all the nature photography of the animals. And looking for a camera, I ended up uh, kind of discovering this archive of photography. But it was really the beauty of the UP that I think drew a lot of the photographers here. At a time when our connection to place and community is more important than ever, photography remains a powerful tool for exploring and celebrating the people, places, and landscapes that define us. By capturing the beauty and character of the UP, we can connect with the past, inspire the present, and create a lasting legacy for the future.
but uh, yeah, this is where everything's stored. There are probably about a quarter of a million glass negatives in here and photographs, and I've got about a tenth of it done in 45 years. <laughs> this negative is at the History Center on display right now, and this is how big the film was. This is a glass plate of a mining Gwyn that was taken by the Child's Art Gallery. This is a Marquette shot of Tezzy, Teddy Roosevelt that I really prize. These are called contact print frames, Native American stereo cards of local Native Americans. This is just pictured rocks. You know, before television, this is what people did. They sat around, they looked at 3D images, uh, all the way you could travel the world. Escanaba, this is Sault Ste. Marie. This is a wet plate stereo negative. The panoramics are really interesting. These are these very long photographs. Child's published over 600 stereo cards. I have about 400 of them. I still gotta look for about 200 more. You could put weights on here, depending on the speed you want the exposure to be. And this is a panoramic camera from uh, about 1889. This goes up to, I don't know how many, these are the negatives. A, these are all towns, A to Z. So these are what's filed. Uh, there are about 15,000 of them that are numbered here. So it's everything in here, this row here, and this row here is all that's cataloged so far. This is what still has to be done. 